And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou lay upon him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast withheld, withheld thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by the horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord shall it be seen. Amen. Let us bow our heads just a moment and offer prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are told by this word which is God that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing of the word of God. And now, Father, we pray that you impart to us the context of this reading, that we might learn, as it is told us by the Bible, that all those things back in the Old Testament was examples that we should see that those who obey God's call are blessed, those who refuse it are cursed. So we pray, Father, that we'll have understanding tonight by the revelation. May the Holy Spirit reveal to us the things that pertaining to us in this day as all hid in this great mystery of God that's been since the foundation of the world. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to talk on the subject, the Lord willing, from the thought of Jehovah Jireh. The word means God will provide himself a sacrifice. And we're speaking of Abraham. And this was at the time that he was looking for a promised son. To get the real truth of this, we'll go back. And this is in the 22nd chapter. We want to visit back. I've got a few scriptures wrote out here that I'd like to refer to, if possible. And I uh, want to speak on them. And I want to start from the 12th chapter. We'll go back to find out who this character, Abraham, is. And now, how, how did it come that God chose him? We know that the promise was given to Abraham and his seed after him. And only to be in Abraham are we heirs with him with the promise. Amen. Now, Abraham had seed, and the seed, of course, was he had many seeds. seeds but he had one seed that the promise was to. He had Ishmael, and then after Sarah died, he married another woman and had seven sons besides the daughters. They're all seed of Abraham, but the, the seeds of Abraham, but the seed was the one who had the promise. And the seed actually is the faith of Abraham that he had in the promised word of God. Now, Abraham, we find out, we don't appear until we find him here about the 12th chapter. In the 11th chapter of Genesis, we find that his father came down from Babylon. And Abraham was just an ordinary man just as you or I or anyone else. And he was getting rather what we would think aged man. He was 75 years old. He had married his half-sister. Her name was Sarah. And his name then, of course, wasn't Abraham. It was Abram. And, um, and her was Sarah. So we find that she was 10 years younger than he, which made her 65, and him 75 years old. They probably is a farmer lived in the valley of the Shinar there and lived an ordinary life. He, he probably went out in the daytime and got his meat from the bush and picked berries and lived that sort of a life, just an ordinary man. There was nothing special about him. But one day God called him. That's what made the difference. When God made the call. And that's the way it is to any life. It takes God. It isn't what you do. It's what God does. See, you said, I sought God, I sought God. You're mistaken. No man seeks God. God seeks the man. Amen. See, it's not you seeking God, it's God seeking you. Jesus said, you haven't chosen me, but I chose you. Right. See, so you're chosen before the foundation of the world, or he wasn't chosen at all. Amen. He just come to redeem that name. And all whose names were not on that man's book of life before the foundation of the world, the only ones going to be there anyhow. See, you were chosen him before the foundation of the world. When the Lamb was chosen, then you were chosen with Him before the foundation. And you are, as I said last night, an attribute of God's thinking. 
That's the way we be eternal. It's the only form of eternal life. There's only one form of eternal life, and that's God. So that's all. He is the one that's eternal. Now, we find that Abraham had that place, and God in the Old Testament worked out types and shadows to show what he was going to do. Now, we find here that God spoke to him, and the great thing after God called him, the call that God gave was a supernatural call. But yet, it never staggered Abraham, no time. He always knowed it was God. That's a great thing. When God's callings are supernatural. There's nothing natural. Uh, God takes the supernatural and works it out in the natural. But the callings of God are supernatural. The Bible says gifts and callings are without repentance. See, it's foreordained by, by God. Now we find that in this, that Abraham being called, he heard the voice of God and he told him something that was almost totally impossible. Him being uh, 75 years old, his wife 65 years old, that would make her about 20 years past menopause, lived with her since she was a girl. They had no children and yet told him they were going to have a baby. And through this baby, the whole world, all the nations would be blessed. Now, that's a strange thing. And Abraham, the Bible said in Romans, the fourth chapter, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving praise to God. I can imagine after the first month, for Sarah, as I said, was past menopause, the first month I can imagine Abraham said, Sarah, how do you feel, honey? No different. Well, bless God, we're going to have the baby anyhow. We're going to have it. God said we was. Sarah knitted the little booties and got the bird eye and the pins and everything got ready. Make it ready for it, because she knows she's going to have it. God said so. Amen. See? The first year passed. You feel any different, honey? No different at all. Praise God, it'd be a great miracle now. It was the first time since a year later. Going to have it anyhow. Why? God said so. That's settled it. God said so. We, God said so. Ten years passed. How you feeling now, honey? Here she's 75. And she's 85. Now, could you imagine an old man and woman like that today going down to the hospital and saying, Doctor, we want to make arrangements. God asks you to believe some of the most ridiculous things, but he always makes it right. God, a person that believes God, uh, absolutely acts crazy to the world. Could you imagine Moses trained in all the, the wisdom of the Egyptians, head of the army, the, uh, the, uh, the armies of Egypt, and yet 40 years it takes him to train up to that, and it's taken God 40 years to take that education out of him. Just what it takes the world to put in him. Forty years more, he got him all trained down, all the education, theology out of him, and he met him on the backside of the desert, and he knew more about God in five minutes than the president of God, and he learned in forty years. That's right. God is not known by education, he's known by faith. And God spoke to him in the supernatural. And what a ridiculous thing sometimes God makes us do. Could you imagine an old man, eighty years old, running, a prophet running from God, and in the presence of God, five minutes, the next morning, could you imagine him? An old man, whiskers hanging way like this, his bald head shining, a crooked stick in his hand, his wife sitting straddling a mule with a young and on her hip on the road down. Where are you going, Moses? Going down to Egypt to take over. Yeah. Take over a one-man invasion. Yeah. That sounds ridiculous. Uh, but the thing of it was, he'd done it. Yeah. Because yeah. God said so. Yeah. That's so. Right. God says so, that's all where he stood. That, right. That's it. If God made the promise, hang your soul on it. If you can believe it, hang your if you don't believe it, stay away from it. <laughs> It'll harm you. But if you believe it, stay with it. It'll take you to the victory, just as sure as the world. Amen. Now we find out that Abraham staggered not the promise of God. And when he was 100 years old and she was 90, I can hear him, can't hardly talk now, he's getting old and feeble. Well, Sarah dear, how do you feel? Well, dear, I feel no different. Hallelujah, we're going to have it anyhow. Yeah, yeah. God said so, that's all there is to it. Amen. God gave the promise. He said he was fully persuaded that God was able to perform what he promised. Amen. And now we call ourselves the seed of Abraham. His royal seed, not Isaac's seed, his royal seed, Christ, and staggered any promise. Fussed with it, said not so, and doubted in our minds. I doubt us being Abraham's seed when we got that kind of thought in us. Abraham's seed staggers not at no thing. He calls things which were not as though they were because God said so. Amen. He's a creator. He can make it so. He promised it and that settles it. That's all there is to it. When God says it, that settles the whole thing. Now, remember, he wanted it. There could not he told another thing he told him to do to separate himself now from his kindred and all of his people. 
God, in order to get a man or a woman, boy or girl, to obey him, you have to separate yourself from all unbelief. Amen. That's right. Until you totally separate yourself from anything contrary to that word. Yes. And believe it, you, God calls for a total separation. What a difference there is today in our schools is sending out ministers. Yes. They, it's in documented with all kinds of unbelief and theories that's no more scriptural than some kind of a creed that they make up and then send them out with such bases that no wonder we've hatched out a bunch of Oswalds and Jack Rubies and so forth across the country. Communism is swarming the country because we've got seminaries and incubator preachers instead of God sent, born again, Holy Ghost filled, fire born, sons of God. Children of Abraham who believe the word of God to be emphatically the truth and nothing else but the truth. Rugged and stand there upon the promises and the faith of anything and face it down that it is the truth. It's God's word. All right. Now he said, separate yourself from all your kindred, from all your people, everything, and follow me. God has not changed his way. God is the unchangeable God. The way God does anything one time, he has to do it the same way the second time. Remember, when you can see God's action in any time, if, he, if, if a man was lost and he saved a man upon the basis of any certain decision he made, he has to always, forever, stay with that same decision. Amen. He cannot change it. Amen. See, he's infinite. We are finite. I can know more tomorrow than I know today. So can you. Know more next year than you do this year. You know more this year than you did last year. But not God. He's perfect. Amen. Infinite. Yeah. Everything he does is perfect. He can't make a decision today and make a better one tomorrow. His first one is perfect. Amen. Therefore, you can just hang your soul on anything he says. It's the truth. Hallelujah. God was called on one time to make a decision how to save a man. And the way he did it was up on the basis of the shed blood of an innocent one yeah. in the Garden of Eden. And man has tried everything in the world to save man otherwise. Uh -huh. They built cities. They built towers. They've had organizations, education, and everything else. And the whole thing is a total flop. There's only one way that God ever saves a man. That's through the shed blood of the innocent. That's the only way. That was God's first decision. He ever remains with it. If God ever healed a man and the basis he healed him on, he's got to heal the next one when he comes to that place. Amen. If he didn't, he acted wrong when he acted the first time when the decision was to be made. Amen. If he ever makes a decision, he has to ever stay with it. If he doesn't, he made the wrong decision then. Yes. See, and who would say God made a wrong decision? See, we couldn't say that. So God has to ever remain with his decision. So when he makes it, it's that. So he said, separate yourself from all your kindred, everything, all the unbelief that come down from Babylon up there, the first great organization uh, in the world was Babylon when it organized all the cities to pay tribute to this one city. Very tight. All these isms and new things see today. If you ever read Hosses two Babylon's and so forth, you get back in Genesis, you'll find out Genesis is the beginning. You see, you see all these isms and things right placed right in there. See these self-starched Pharisees that come down from there, from that woman with them curious roots and so forth. Come out in the days of Jesus. Pharisees didn't believe in spirit or nothing else. And they hindered Jesus. Jesus said, let them alone. The blind leads the blind. They both fall in the ditch. Yes. He went right on preaching and healing the sick and performing miracles and just the same. It didn't stop him because he was the Word. The Word Amen. goes right on regardless of what takes place. Amen. So we find those things go on and they finally come to the blossom here in the last days. As Jambres and Jambres withstood Moses, so will it be the same thing. Now, total separation from all unbelief. And remember, Abraham, the patriarch, was never absolutely fully blessed until he obeyed exactly what God said to do. And we'll never, never, never be blessing and have the blessings until we obey what God said to do. Another thing I want you to notice here in the 12th chapter, that the covenant was altogether unconditional. It was not any strings attached to it. I have. Not if you, well, no ifs to it. I have already done it. Amen. He gave Abraham the covenant unconditionally. And now, you know, in the Adamic covenant, it was if you don't touch this tree, then I'll do so and so. But if you do, then I'll have to do so and so. See, that had law attached to it. But in this covenant, I have already made you a father of many nations. And he's all, it's all unconditional. The covenant is purely grace. Just absolutely grace. 
Only the thing they had to do to maintain this covenant was stay and abide in the land and every blessing went with the covenant was with them. Only thing they had to do was stay in that land. Now we find out when they went down in Egypt, they lost their blessing, but not their covenant. The covenant was still there. They lost the blessing, but not their covenant because their covenant was great unconditionally. And in Exodus, the 19th chapter, Israel made one of its most rational things that it ever did was when it refused grace and accepted law. Amen. Look what grace had done. Grace had to furnish them a deliverer, had to furnish them a prophet with a pillar of fire to vindicate him, with a confirmed word, with a sacrificial lamb. Grace had given them a great revival. Grace had brought them through, opened up the Red Sea, brought them across that, delivered them with signs and wonders, all by grace. But they wanted something so they could make themselves with big names. Now, if that just isn't the people today, it's just the same thing. They've got to be, man's got to get himself involved in it somewhere. And there's where uh, Israel made its great mistake when it rejected grace and took law instead. And the, still, but the covenant that he made with it was still unconditional. It's still the same thing today. We find it. Abraham then actually had these conditions given to him. He started his journey going on. Now, we finally moved out. And in the 13th chapter, he finally come to a spot of full obedience to God. Now, we find in the 13th chapter that Lot, first he took his father. The old man was always kind of in the way, and he tried to get a bunch dragging along with him. And when you do that, that's where you got it. God said, separate. Well, I'll tell you, they don't believe exactly, but they get away from it. That's the only thing you stay away from it. And then the old man, he finally at the very end, then Lot became a, a hare and a biscuit, as the say. We find out that he began to murmur. And they both got rich, and they had plenty to get along with. And we find out then that Lot began to quarrel his herdsmen against Abraham's uh, herdsmen. And we find out that he hadn't, God hadn't fully uh, found faithfulness in Abraham to obey what he told him to do to completely separate himself from all of his kindred, from all of his people, and to serve him. So we find out that God, speaking to Abraham here at the altar, and uh, told him what to do, finally, Lot, when come the question came up between Abraham and Lot was his brother, Hiram's son, and they is be his nephew. And finally he said, we are brother now. We won't have any quarrels among us. Now, if you, if you go east, I'll go west. And if you go west, I'll go east. Now, you just separate ourselves, and we want with plenty of room here for all of us. And you just go, you just make the choice. Now, that was the real Christian spirit in Abraham. Give even the enemy the benefit of the choice. And so he... Uh, let him take his way. And Lot, like so many today, seen the opportunity. If he ever got away from that strictness, well, he might make himself a few dollars. He might be a popular man. So he looked down towards Sodom, and it was a well-watered land and big city and fine and industrial salt and so forth. They, they had the exports from there. And, and then again, it was full of big-time women with all their... Jezebel paint and everything. Just a great time. His wife kind of felt a little that way too because we find out after he become mayor down there that she kind of she kind of liked the way of the people. And that's the only thing you have to do is get mixed up with something. Yeah. See, God wants you to separate yourself and, and get so far away from them things so you don't even see them at all. Right? Yeah. You want to see one thing that's him and what he promised. Amen. But Miss Lot, she kind of liked it, and no doubt she kind of said, Dear, now, I was just down, and you look how the women are dressing down there. And look at those girls. Look how our girls dress. Well, don't you think that they're more modern? Oh, my. We haven't got right back to another Sodom. I don't know why. Amen. There we find that Abraham stayed with the promise. Then we find out as it goes on, in the, as they separate themselves, and Lot and Abraham took the poor grounds a little way, Stayed up where there was not uh, very much grazing for his cattle. And, but he's ready to take the way because God had put him in that land and that's where he wanted to stay. He's ready to take it. Now, when he finally fully obeyed God, yes. when he finally obeyed God to its fullness to separate himself completely, it was then the Lord appeared to him. Yes. Yes. Until he did that, the Lord stayed away from Abraham. 
But when he fully obeyed, then God appeared to him and said, Abraham, lift up your eyes. Look east. Look west. Look north. Look south. All of it belongs to you. <laughs> Amen. Now, I like that. And you know, that's something like it was when I got saved. I'd always heard about God being a great God. And you know, uh, when I got saved, I, somebody said, now all you have to do is join church and put your name on this church roll here at the Baptist church. That's all you have to do. But you know, one day I seen that I was heir to something. And I, I wanted to look through it and see what I had. You know, I'm just that way, like a, a big arcade. You own it, and, and everything in there belongs to you. you. You don't know what you own, so you're going to look into the Bible to find out the promises. Amen. 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 They'll keep you from them if they can, but they're yours. Every promise is to Abraham Amen. and to his seed after you. Amen. Amen. Every divine Amen. promise in the Word belongs to Abraham and his seed, and you're heir to it. Yes. An heir. Amen. Oh, my. I like to look through to see what I got. If somebody gives me something, I like to look it over. Amen. And I like to look through the Bible and see what belongs to me. Amen. Every seed of Abraham ought to do that. When you become born again, filled with the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit upon you, you're heir to every one of those promises. Amen. You know, it's like I said, a big arcade. For we're baptized into that arcade by one Spirit. We're all baptized into one body. That body's Christ, which is the royal seed of Abraham and heirs to everything that's in it. Amen. 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 Everything that was in God, God poured into Christ. Everything that was in Christ, He poured into the believer. Amen. God above us, God with us, and God in us. Everything, every promise in the book is yours if you can believe it. If you have faith enough to accept it and believe it. You know, when I look around, if I find something that's a little too high, wonder what's in that, I'll get me a ladder and push it around and keep climbing to get up to it. That's where a promise in the Bible. If anything seems like it's kind of mysterious to me, I just keep on praying until I reach it. That's all. Amen. That's the way you do it. Keep praying. Keep holding on. Climbing up. Amen. Believing until you're, you're heir to it. you got a promise to it. And you got a right to it. And ask them you shall receive. For all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. Now we find out that Abraham walked through the land. God told him, he said, walk through the land. Look over it. Everything in here belongs to you. Every bit of it is all yours. It all belongs to you. Now, we find out then that, uh, that in the 14th chapter of Exodus, or 14th chapter of Genesis, pardon me, in the 14th chapter of Genesis, Abraham and Lot had been separated, and Lot finally got into some trouble. And you always do when you separate yourself from believers, you get into trouble. Amen. We find out that the king's Gun confederate, and they made war, and they come down and they took Sodom, they took Gomorrah, they took all the kings of the dales, the valleys, and everything, they took Lot, and just a few people escaped into the mountains, and when they did, someone had escaped, come and told Abraham, the Hebrew, said that the uh, Sodom has fallen, and Gomorrah, and they have took their kings, and, and so forth, and took all the peoples, and their fiddles, and everything they had, and they took Lot, and his wife and his daughters, all the women, and gone on with it. Now Abraham, watch this Christian spirit, pursuing for his brother. Abraham, his old lot backslidden, gone back, yet Abraham loved him. He kept on pursuing, just like Jesus in the uh, uh, Laodicea church age. Yet they put him out of the church, and he is on the outside knocking, trying to get back in. He could just get somebody to open the door so he could come in. There's that spirit of Abraham see, going after his fallen, degraded brother. And he went after him. And he took his 300 man servants and armed them. And he met him down at Dan. That's the extreme end of Palestine. There, and he met him there and separated himself at night and pursued and fought the armies down and overcome the kings and slaughtered them and brought back all that was taken out. Notice. When he come back, what a beautiful picture here. That's the reason I just like to Hallelujah. kind of preview this a little bit so we get to, before I get to the text of Jehovah Jireh. If you notice, Abraham bringing back all that had been lost, his wayward brother and the children, as he brought them back, the kings come out to meet him, and Melchizedek come out, which was the king of Salem, king of peace the king of righteousness, yes. 
the king of Jerusalem, without father, without mother, without beginning of days, without ending of life, Melchizedek made on the slaughter, coming from the slaughter of the king to whom the patriarch Abraham, Hebrews 7, met this man and paid a tenth of tithing. Yes. What a great man this must have been. Who do you think it was? He had no father. Yes. He had no mother. Glory. He had never did it again. And ever who he is, he's still living. Yes. He's still living yes. yes. <laughs> The king of Salem. King of peace. Oh, who was this great man? And notice what a type we find here. After the battle is over, after the, the real believer has fought the enemy, broke down the lines and tried to capture his brother, the real seed of Abraham, bringing back that wayward brother, Melchizedek, come out and serve wine and bread. Yes. Communion. Amen. Give him communion after the battle was over. Amen. Serve the communion to him after the battle. A very beautiful type of when the battle is over here on earth. The victories have been won. Jesus said they would eat it anew in the Father's kingdom. After the wayward had been brought back, then the first thing we do when we go in after the battle's over is set down at the table Amen. in the kingdom of God. And there, those that have fought and set down and overcome shall be clothed in the righteousness of Christ and then again they take the bread and the wine in the Father's kingdom on the other side. What a real picture this is of uh, Abraham going out and getting Lot and bringing him back. Now, we find out then that in the 15th chapter, we find something very outstanding here. Uh, I kind of like this extremely well. Seeing who Abraham was now, and Abraham and his seed after him. We find here that after Abraham had done all these great things, believing God, holding to the promise, separating himself, and all along following out uh, the way of uh, carrying out the commandments of the Lord, we find out that God appeared to him at the altar, and Abraham asked him the question. He said, Now, who is my heir but, but this Eliezer of Damascus? And now you promised me a seed. And I, I want you to do something. I want you to confirm this promise to me. And God said that he would confirm it to Abraham, confirming the covenant that he had made between him and Abraham. Now he's going to give him a sign Amen. that it's going to be true. That uh, even though he's old, he's about 85 now, but yet he's going to prove to him by a sign that he's going to keep that covenant. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad that God always gives a sign because he, we ought to know today that the hour that we're now living, there's supposed to be a sign in the earth at this time. We're to look for that sign. God never does anything without first giving the people a sign and a warning. Right. And a genuine sign is followed by a voice. And the voice is always a scriptural voice. Now, he's going to confirm the covenant to Abraham. Or Abram, yes. And he said, take you a young heifer. I remember there's a female calf. And take a she-goat of three years old. Each must be three years old. Notice, a three-year-old heifer, female, three-year-old a goat, uh, a female, and a ram, male. Each three, three years old, and there's three of them. Three she, two she's, and a he. See? Three-year-old clean sacrifice, a uh, uh, heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, and then a ram. If you notice, everything there builds into a sign. And I'm not supposed to preach doctrine from the platform here. And I'm sure that's close enough you can see. Notice, and took two, two birds, one a pigeon and one a turtle dove, which are the same family. 
the pigeon and the turtle dove. Now he cut the go- the sheep in two. He cut the the ram and the goat and the others. He divided them, cut them in half, and laid them down. But the doves he and the pigeon he did not divide. That was, of course, anyone knows the scripture knows that's divine healing it's in both covenants. And so we find out he laid them in. Healing's always by faith in the shed blood. Yes. Always. in the old covenant had divine healing. How much more has the new covenant got? Amen. See? Amen. If the old covenant produced it, what about the new one? Right. When it's a much better covenant, speak of better, higher things, greater things, better things, the new covenant. Amen. Now, Amen. we find in this that Abraham, when he did this then, Notice what happened. Now here's a great outstanding point. I don't want you to, to, to miss it. The confirmation of the covenant. In other words, it's a promise that I'm true to what I do or what I say I'll do. God confirming it to Abraham. And he took those sacrifices and slayed them and put them into the end together as he laid them down and watched the birds off of them so the birds wouldn't come down upon the fresh meat until the sun was going down in the evening. And when the sun came down or was going down, here he showed Abraham what he was going to do in the future, what was going to happen. Notice, he told Abraham, first thing he saw was a real hard of darkness come over him. First, a real heavy sleep fell upon him. Now, that sleep represented death to all human beings. Every man has to die. Death to all human beings, that sleep come upon him. And before that went up, a a real horror of blackness. And then went a furnace of fire. And then a little burning light went between the covenants, went between the sacrifices, divided it. Now, what does that mean? It means that every human being has to die. And really, after that, deserves to go to hell. That's right. Darkness. Outer darkness. Separated from God. But the light came in Amen. and went in between dividing those sacrifices. If you understand, we, that covenant, like we Americans, how do we make a covenant? Well, the first thing we do, we say we're going to make some kind of a business deal or something. We usually go out and eat and sit down and talk a while, and then give our propositions, and then shake one another's hands. We say, shake on it. That's our covenant. That's our promise. Now, in Japan, you know how to make a covenant in Japan? They also have something to eat. Then they pick up a little cruise of salt, and they throw salt on each other. That's confirmation of the covenant. We shake hands and say, it's sealed, old boy. I believe it. I'll stay with you. It's a promise. In Japanese, Japan, they throw salt on one another. It's sealed, buddy. That's the end of it. That's the end of all strife. Then they, they made the covenant, confirmed it by throwing salt on one another. But in the old days, now I have one of these. In the old days, here's where they made a covenant. We draw an agreement. And we took an agreement, wrote it out like that. And then we killed an animal, a sacrifice. Divided it, laid out like it was in Abraham's time there. And then... We stood in between this covenant, you and I, and we made a vow to God. If we fail to keep this covenant, may we be as that dead sacrifice that died in our place. Let that blood of that sacrifice answer on us. May we die the same death if we fail to keep the covenant. Then it's all drawn out, uh, wrote out on a piece of script like that. Then it's torn to you, like that. Now, you take one half, and I take a half. And I see you cannot duplicate that at all, especially when it's grown on sheepskin. See, you could not duplicate it at all. This has to exactly dovetail with that to make it so. And then when we come together, I'm carrying one part, you're carrying the other part. And then when we come together and this covenant is to be made and our vows is to be paid, then my piece of paper must exactly dovetail with your piece of paper. And therefore, you are the one that's with me in the covenant. What God was showing there, he was doing, that God himself was coming down to be made flesh. Yes. And he was going to be in the covenant. And God took Christ, the Spirit, God, Jehovah, took Christ at, on the cross, and he tore him in two. He ripped out his soul and set it on high and took 
the body and put it in the grave, then lifted up the body in the morning of the resurrection and sent back the spirit that was up on him Amen. to be on the church. Amen. That's the same confirmation in this last day. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That the same covenant would have to be in the people. How are you going to get it through education? How are you going to get it anyway besides the confirmation of the living, resurrected Jesus Christ that's been raised up from the dead and setting in the majesty on high tonight with the same spirit that's up on him is up on Abraham's royal seed in the last day confirming his proving and he's the same yesterday. Amen. 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 Makes you feel religious, doesn't it? Amen. There is the exact covenant. Write my covenant upon their heart. Jesus said the things that I do shall you also. Well, if we come up here to Sodom in a few minutes, watch how it is, how it takes place there. Exactly how the promise is for the last day and what he would do. He was confirming, showing that he, he tore the body of Jesus apart, taking the spirit, lifted up the body to the right hand of the throne of God, and sent down the other part, the part he tore out, the Spirit, upon us, which is called the Holy Spirit, and the very life that was in Christ is in you, that shows he's your Redeemer, he's adopted you unto God, and now we are sons and daughters of God with the Spirit of Christ. Works that I do shall you do also. Greater than this shall you do, for I go unto my Father. Amen. 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 The spirit that was in him is on you. Yes. Eternal life. He is the giver of eternal life. Yes. He's a redeemer to bring back that which fell in the fall of the human race to bring back to God. And the spirit that was in Christ is in you. And if the spirit of a, of a villain was in me, I'd have guns. If the spirit of an artist was in me, I'd paint pictures. If the Spirit of Christ is in you, the works of Christ you do. Hallelujah. Amen. God, That's right. The life that is in him is in you. Transfer the life of anything to another thing. If you could take a, the life of a, of a pumpkin and put it in a watermelon vine, it would bear pumpkins. Yes. Exactly. You take the life out of a peach tree and put it in a pear tree, it will bear uh, peaches. Because the life that's in the tree gives the evidence of it. Yes. And there's how the royal seed through Isaac come the natural seed that rejected it. In the cross from Ephraim to Manasseh, it was transferred, the blessing from the right hand to the left hand, or the left hand belongs to the left, the youngest to the oldest, to there turn the whole situation from the natural seed of Isaac, which rejected Christ, in the natural church today, we're still rejected, but the spiritual royal seed of God that believes, the royal seed of Abraham, which believes every word of God, has the confirmation of the living, resurrected Jesus Christ in them. Oh, my. See, the same thing it was, the whole church must be in relation. When it was Christ in the natural seed. Look, Isaac and Rebecca were first cousins. Blood relation. Same fathers. See? Fathers were brothers. Made them blood cousins. The bride and the bridegroom. And in Adam and Eve, it was all Adam to begin with. God took a rib from his side and made a woman. And he took the feminine spirit out of Adam and put it in a woman. That word, when a woman acts masculine, they sent it a perversion there somewhere. Amen. And when a man wants to be a big sissy, they something wrong somewhere. Amen. God made a man and dressed him like a man and a woman like a woman. He ever remains him to be that way. Amen. 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 And when you see him doing something else, there's something wrong. It's perverted. Amen. And the whole thing has become a bunch of perverts. It's exactly like the whole race, the whole generation. It's all the whole thing, the putrefied sores of the Bible says. It's hardly soundness anywhere. You know that's the truth. You can't find hardly right among out in the Guado Street, it's hard to find a real man. That's right. as I ever seen. And women are wear trousers, cut their hair, wear lipstick, smoke cigarettes, try to be a man. What do you want to be a man for? You're supposed to be 
a lady. I seen a sign that said tables for ladies in a bar room. I said, you never had a customer. A lady won't go to such a place. You don't say, you know, a lady on it. A woman might, but not a lady. You won't go to such a place. But there you are. See, God separated. See, the body, the bride of Christ has to come right back to the first. Now, Eve was, what was Eve? Her and Adam were the same. They were called Adam. They were spirit. When he formed man the first time, he made him in his own image, and God is the spirit. And the image of God created he, him, male and female, created he them. He was, and then still there was no man to till the soil. Then God formed man out of the dust of earth and put this dual spirit into him. And that was the first Adam. Then when he separated Eve from Adam, Eve fell by disbelieving the word. Amen. Right. That's where the church failed today. Amen. Disbelieving the word. Amen. But in this case, to the royal seed called predestinated the eternal life. Amen. The royal seed of Abraham. They believe that word. I don't care what comes or goes. How I say that. Who says this? That is. They're ordained to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And she goes right straight back. Her and her lover Christ is one. Amen. The life, the spirit that's in Christ is in the church. Amen. That's the eternal covenant here. See? God took the spirit of Christ, tore it apart at the sacrifice to Calvary, and took that spirit, lifted up the body, set it on the right hand of the throne of God and majesty on high. That's everything in heaven is controlled by him. And then the spirit that was upon him comes back the same spirit. Amen. Not another spirit. The same spirit. Amen. Come upon him to confirm the covenant Amen. to the royal seed in the last day. Amen. We're supposed to see it according to the scripture. And before the bride of Christ can ever be taken up, there has to be a ministry just dovetails that it's down. Amen. 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 I'm so glad to say tonight. Oh, that's a Amen. 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 Dovetailing. Confirming the covenant. He confirmed there, showed him what he was going to do. Confirming the covenant. Any Bible scholar knows that's what he confirmed the covenant to Abraham. What was he doing? Showing in a figure what he was going to do with these sacrifices. And I'm getting late and I won't have time to divide these sacrifices. I'm going to have to maybe do that tomorrow night. But notice, show what, they, what these sacrifices meant. But see, he confirmed it. Showing that in the last days, now anyone that ever read ancient history knows that that's where they made a covenant. They wrote it and then tore it apart and handed one, one piece and one another. And they had to come back over a sacrifice, make a sacrifice. That's what Abraham did to, uh, to the... Uh, down in Berea and so forth where he went there where they offered the altar, offered up their sacrifice and made their agreements and tore it apart like that. And God did the same thing showing there that what he was going to do to Abraham. The question was, where's, where's the seed you promised me? Where, how am I going to do that? The people were laughing at me saying, Abraham, father of nations, been 15 years. Now you're 85 years old. Uh, or 90. Where, 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 where's all your children at? How many children you got now, father of nations? See, making fun of him. But he staggered not. He stayed right with him. They found that father of nations. Now let's see, how many children do you have this time? <laughs> see, want to make fun because he was holding to God's promises. Amen. Believing that he's able to keep what he promised. Amen. He's, he's more than able. He's, he can provide his own sacrifice. He's Jehovah Jireh. Amen. He can provide and make a way for what he promised. And he confirmed the covenant to him by showing him how he was going to do it. Taking Christ and tearing the life from him and send it down in the last days of all. Now, we finished that in Scripture this week to prove that to you, that this covenant has to be confirmed with the royal seed of Abraham, which are the people out of the Gentiles, not Jews, the people out of the Gentiles for his name's sake. Yes. Taking it for his name. The church that's got his name Amen. will come back into him because that's who she is, her life. Listen. When on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, the life was given to the church. And that church went right out and produced, uh, they wrote behind that church a book of Acts of what it did because it was Christ in the apostles. Now, Jesus said in St. John 15, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Now, the vine does not bear fruit. The branch bears fruit. It's energized by the vine. Well, now, 
if that limb, first one come out on that tree, produce a book of Acts, if that ever puts out another limb, it'll be the same one. A few months ago, I was standing with my good friend John Sher up at Phoenix. I live in Tucson, as you know. And so I was up to Phoenix, Brother John Sher, very fine Christian brother. And he's real, real poor, and the Lord has blessed him. And, and when I first went to Phoenix years ago, he had no children, and, and he was wanted children, and, and he's poor, working out on the street, busting concrete about 25, 30 cents an hour. And he come down there, and he believed every word of the message. Right. And he said, will you pray for me? He's got five children now. Mm-hmm. And that, on besides that, he gives around three to four million dollars every year to the cause of Christ. Amen. That's Praise right. I was with him here not long ago looking over his cotton farm. He bought a whole county. <laughs> had 1,500 Mexicans taking care of it. And was 15 years ago was busting concrete for 25 cents an hour. And he took me out in his great citrus scroll, and I've seen the funniest looking tree that I've ever seen in my life. It was uh, some kind of a tree that had all kinds of fruit on it. And I looked, and it had oranges, it had lemon, it had grapefruits, it had tangerines, it had tangelos. I think it's about nine different kinds of fruit or ten. And I said, what kind of a tree is that? Oh, he said, that's just a little experiment, Brother Branham. I said, oh, I see. I said, they all live on that one tree. I said, what kind of tree is it to begin with? He said, it's an orange tree. That's a navel orange. And I said, it is? I said, what's these other fellows doing on there? And he said, they're grafted into it. I said, oh, I see. I said, I understand. I said, now, um, uh, now next year, everything will turn back to an orange one. He said, oh, no. He said, no, the lemon will bring forth the lemon. He said, the, and the grapefruit will bring forth the grapefruit. And the tangerine will bring forth the tangerine. I said, out of an orange tree? He said, yes, sir. I said, I don't see how you do it. That's all citrus fruit. I said, well, praise the Lord. I see something. Look. Oh, brother. Mm-hmm. When that Holy Spirit come up into that vine and produced from its vine to the first branch and they wrote a book of Acts behind it, if that tree ever puts forth another original limb, she'll grow the same thing. It'll be Jesus Christ. Now, we've got Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist, Lutheran, everything else grafted into it, bearing denominational fruit, but if it ever puts forth another branch, she'll be a genuine wine Christ, still Christ, sinner's yeah. word of God. Yeah. And remember you remember the bride tree message when he ever takes the tape? How that the husband would come forth and it was bearing the wrong kind of fruit, so he cut it off. Cut it off. Keep cutting it back, cutting it back. But Joel said what the polymer worm left, the caterpillar eating. What the polymer caterpillar left, something else eating. You find out that insects is the same insect only in a different stage. Amen. And what the Lutheran left, the Methodist eating. What the Methodist left, the Baptist eating. What the Baptist left, the Pentecostal eating. Amen. The whole thing's cut down, but God said, I will restore, said the Lord, all the years. I'll stand back another church in the last day. I will restore that original power of it. Uh, in the evening time, it shall be light. Down in the heart of that tree, no matter how many branches is through, will come forth the wild seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. I promise that God will do it. He said he would do it. I will restore all the years that the denominations eat. I will restore all the years I pruned the thing off, but yet there will come a vine out of the heart of it. He'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. A man that meditates in the Word of God day and night, not to a tree or a denomination, but meditates in the Word day and night. He'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Thank you, Thank you with her. He'll bring forth his fruit in the season. God promises. God carrying loose. Pulling out, Amen. cutting apart, Amen. separating himself, dividing himself. He did the same thing on the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Ghost come down, that pillar of fire come down, that fire of Israel, we all know that was the Logos, yes. that was Christ. And when it come down on the day of Pentecost, what did it do? It divided itself, and tongues of fire set upon each one of them. Amen. God dividing himself among the people. Yes. Oh, brother, you can be undivided with the same spirit that was in Christ. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Amen. Greater than this, or more than this, the right translation, for I go unto the Father. Yeah. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, yet you'll see me. Amen. For I, personal pronoun, Amen. I'll be with you, even in you, Amen. at the end time, the conversation.
consummation. Promise to do it. The seed of Abraham. He's here now. He's, we're here a few days ago celebrating the resurrection of him. That God raised him up. We testify it. We sing it. And he might appear and do something that he did just like he did before his resurrection. We call it a fortune teller, a devil, a Beelzebub. Shut it out from the church. What do we do that for? Has to fulfill the scripture that in the lady of sea age, the word which was Christ was put on the outside, knocking at the door, trying to get some cooperation from somewhere. Amen. Come in and make yourself known. Amen. But there will come a branch out of there just as certain as anything. I said to Brother Sherry, then what kind of a branch will it bring forth next year? Will it be an orange? Will it be a lemon? Will it be the original, he said. Amen. When it brings forth a branch out of itself, it will be an orange, just like it was at the beginning. And when the real living seed of Abraham come up, that same spirit was in Jesus Christ to live among them. Every word will be punctuated with an amen. amen. They believe it. Not this is inspired and that's not inspired. They believe the whole thing because it's the word of God. Amen. You believe it tonight with all your heart? Amen. Amen. I've done preached here now until we've got a long time. Let's bow our heads just a minute. I'll finish this tomorrow night. I promise I wouldn't keep you listening. Jesus Christ the same yesterday today for a confirmed yeah. it settled it with Abraham when by faith he saw it went right on staggering not and unbelief yeah. he staggered not now what about his royalty we who claim we Christians of this day who claim to kiss the same cup that he drank from having his same spirit within us and to see him vindicate his promise of being here with us, the promise to make it fulfilled, it's never been so in all the ages. We've never had it before. Search the history. Never did it appear. And where did it supposed to go in the last days? To the elect church, not the Babylon, not the Sodom. They had a messenger down. There. But the Holy Spirit is a messenger to the elect church, like God dwelling in human flesh, showing himself the discerner, the word that discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's already provided our sacrifice and confirming his covenant, his keeping his covenant in the last days of the people. Friends, we could talk here all night. Things have been said. There's enough said. There's people here that are sick. You need healing. Why don't you believe that? If I could heal you, I'd do it. Be praying. If I could heal you, I would do it. I cannot heal you. I'm, you notice I'm giving the service the first night or two here on praying for the sick. Now, it's not only for that. If there's any seed here that's already alive, the Holy Spirit will catch it. They'll see it. They'll know it. Now, he, how many in here would raise your hands before God and say, I believe it with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, that he arose from the dead, and he's alive among us tonight, showing himself to be among us, and I believe it is of God. Would you raise your hands and say, I truly believe it. Now, Heavenly Father, they're in your hands. They are, they are claiming that they are the seed of Abraham. They, they, want, they, they want the blessings of God. And I, I told them in this simple little way, I started on a text and didn't get to finish it. But Father, they, they see here in the confirmation to Abraham that you confirm the promise to him. Give him the confirmation. Now, if the, if the Spirit of Christ isn't in us, then we are nothing of Christ. And Christ's nature cannot be changed. And he's well told us and promises these things according to the Bible in many places. Even the Old Testament promises in Malachi 4 that how it would be in the last days would turn the hearts of the children back to the faith of the fathers, the, the Pentecostal fathers, the original doctrine of the Bible, the original word, that what it would do. And there would be a sign, and this sign would confirm, be confirmed by the voice that would follow it, that you are here. And we believe you. Now, Father, may, may Satan make his way out. We, we do not believe that we have any power, Lord. We don't claim to have power. We claim to have authority. We realize a little policeman on the street with a little cap sitting on his head, a big car sweeping down through them broadways at 90 miles an hour with 300 horsepower motor. He hasn't got power to stop a one of them. They just crush him right down. But just let him show that badge and lift his hand. Brakes will squeal and tires will hum. It's authority. The whole city's behind him. He's got authority, not power. He may not weigh a hundred pounds, but he's got authority. 
And that's the way it is tonight, Lord. We come to Satan, not with power, but with the authority showing the blood and the confirmation of the covenant. He has no right to hold these sick people. Looking up on them and seeing them sweating it out here. Oh, God, if there's some way I can just get the message to them. If they could only see, Lord, just realize. Wake them up, Lord, one time now tonight. Let them see that you're the same God. You're confirming your word. You keep it just as you promised. In these last days, you said these things would happen. When the Son of Man is being revealed, that these things would take place. Grant it, Lord, and let them see that it's you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And I saw him, so I just run past my time, see. And I, I didn't mean to do that. I told him I'd go be out on time tonight, but I failed it because I, I finished my text tomorrow night, maybe the Lord's will leave. Now, here we are. You're people, we're all, we're just human beings. We want to live. Everybody wants to live his time now. I believe God wants us to do that. I, I do believe it. Now, it isn't because there's no bomb in Gilead. You know, it said one time, well, why is, if, if there's no bomb in Gilead, there's no prophet there, Isaiah said, I mean, uh, uh, Elijah said, go ask him, is it because there's no prophet in Israel? Why do you go to Acre and up there, the God Beelzebub? Why, why do you go up there, him being a Jew? Why do you go up there? He said, it's because there's no bomb in Gilead, there's no physician there. Is, there, is that the reason? Is that the reason? No, sir. We've got bomb. Amen. The Holy Spirit's here. Amen. Yes, sir. The promise is ours. Amen. Now you just got to believe it. It's a day to where people's minds are so scattered, they don't, I feel sorry for them. They don't know what to believe. One says this and one says that. Let every man's word be a lie and mine be true, the Lord God said. Amen. That's right. Uh, he cannot change his nature. Now, I believe last night when he started prayer card one, wasn't it called up to about 20 or something like that? Huh? Let's just change that procedure. Let's not have any prayer cards at all. Just, you just pray. You know, a prayer card just gets you up here, but I feel his presence, so uh, I just know he's here. How many ever have seen a picture of that angel of the Lord? So help me when I meet you at judgment. It ain't two feet from where I'm standing right now. Right. He's here. Now, somebody has got prayer cards, raise up your hand and say, I haven't got prayer cards yet, I'm sick and needy. But just everyone. All right? Now I'll tell you, what did that angel do up there that time? He turned his back, had his back turned to Abraham, which I was going to get to tonight and didn't do it. And where he said it would be the same thing at the coming of the Lord as it was at Sodom. We find out he had his back turned to the tent. Sarah uh, laughed at what he said because he told him, and she couldn't understand it, that just being a man out there eating the meat that she fried, drinking the milk from the cow, and he gets scared. And that was God. The Bible said it was. Abraham said it was. Elohim. That's right. Elohim. God. He vanished right before Abraham. And God called him Lord God. Elohim. All sufficient one. In the beginning, the same word used. Any scholar knows that. In the beginning, God. Look at the Hebrew, Elohim. Watch when Abraham said, Lord God, Elohim. Same man. Same person. Showing that God would manifest himself in human flesh to Abraham's seed to confirm the covenant and do the same thing he did. Amen. See? Same thing he did there. He's always a prophet that discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart because how many knows the Bible says that the word of God discerns the thoughts of the heart? Amen. Now, if God will take at least three people in here tonight, now this is a challenge. If anybody don't think it's so, you come to it. They don't, they don't send it about it. Now notice, take at least three people, three is a confirmation, that's totally strangers, and if the Holy Spirit, you just believe, that's all I ask you to believe, to do is to believe that this Bible is the truth, and we're living in the last days, and this is the promise for the last days. Remember, Abraham or no one else seen any other sign until the promised son came on the scene. Amen. Abraham seen all kinds of signs and things up to that, but that was the last sign. He'll never break it, the continuity of God. The seed of Abraham, that's their last sign. Amen. That's that God, he knew right then, that was Elohim. And Jesus come right back and said, he'll be that way, and here we are right here today on it. Amen. The same thing. People, this is truth. I know God, you're in a little barn, he said, but it's always been that way. He was born in a manger. Yes. There's hardly anyone would believe him. But it's just those seeds that believe it's ordained to life, as all the fathers give and he will come to me. Amen. That's, Amen. that's where that their names are, they'll sit. And how they'll do it. Now, see, just the idea, I, I could pray and lay hands up on you, and we'll speak on that, especially on Sunday afternoon. But I, I want you to see that you can lay your hands on him. 
He's the high priest Amen. that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Uh, you believe that? Yes. You believe it. And now, if he will do that, I, I do know somebody here. I happen to look over, and I see two or three of my friends sitting right there. That's a minister, a couple of them there. One with his head down. The Lord just he was a little boy from the concussion of the brain yesterday. Called me by telephone, and, and another man there, and his little baby the other night. They thought it was dead, and I was in Beaumont, and we called one over. He laid his hands upon me, started crying, said, "Brother Brown, the word of the Lord is with you. Just ask him." Is that very minute the little baby come back to life and started living again? That's the father stepping right there, a minister. And uh, this man, a car wrecked and throwed him through the something other and over into a ditch and concussed his little brain and they, the Lord healed him perfectly. Oh, they believe. They absolutely. Now, don't say I did it. I had nothing to do with their faith in God. That's what I did. Amen. You have faith. All Jesus said in St. Mark 11, 22, Whatsoever thing, if you say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you said will come to pass, you can have what you said. But there it is, see, it's not a hope, it's a noise. Amen. And if he can prove himself alive, the one that made the promise can prove himself alive, and nothing else in the world can do it. We've got to shake yourself real hard, your spirit, see? Nothing in the world can do it but God. Amen. Now, you can, you can judge the evil one if you want to. They judge him evil, so they still judge his spirit evil. They said he was the devil doing that. Well, of course, they got that reward. You just believe. You can't heal. I can't heal. There's no man can heal. God's the healer. But if you could just realize that the very one that you serve and separate yourself from the world to serve, the very one that you love, the very one that's going to stand in the judgment, you in the judgment with him to be judged, if his presence can come right here and show that he's here. Now, his corporal body can't do it. When that comes, time's over. As the lightning cometh from the east and to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. But his spirit in the church has come, look at has come up through justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and now right into the rapture in time to get the church ready. Just exactly the way it comes. Just the way the church ages are lined out. And we've seen that everything coming right down, right down. Pentecost is the last organization. That's part of the scripture. It'll be the last organization. Rejected with the rest of them. That's right, it's an organization. No organization is accepted to God. It's, right. a, it's individuals. It's one that's accepted to God. Now, can't you believe His presence? I hear a, I'm just your brother. And now, with stamp, that God told me to come do this. Therefore, I believe you. And if it wasn't written in the Word for this age, I'd walk away from it. Anything that's not in that Word, I don't believe it. I, I wouldn't accept it. I don't say I wouldn't believe it, but I don't accept it. I don't understand it. But when it's in this Word and a promise for this age, I understand it. Hallelujah. Do you? Hallelujah. May the Lord help us now. And you just, you reach up now by faith. Believe that in the, our presence, we're in His presence, rather. Now, is that same Jesus that made that promise? And in the Bible, you're the inspired Paul who had the revelations in such abundance, he was made nervous and had trouble in the flesh, except he get exalted above the abundance of the revelations. See, he wrote the Bible. It was so inspired. He wrote the books of the Bible like Moses. He was a prophet. So he, the word come to him and he wrote it. It's permitted into the scripture, the sacred writing. Now, he was the one that as, as says, the, at least it's taught these things. Now, remember that Christ is risen from the dead and is among us. Now, get that in your mind. Christ raised from the dead and is among us. Now, we have seen all kinds of great moves and shouting and praising God. It's all fine. We spoke in tongues and prophesied. and all. We see all that. That's fine. That comes right along with it. But remember, the last thing is His divine presence, the Word itself. He is the Word. The head. The Word. It's coming to the body. See? And then that Word, in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, said the Word of God is sharper, more powerful than a two-edged sword. And a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I take that scripture and run it right back from the beginning of the prophets. Run it right on down through Jesus Christ and see if that isn't the same thing. The Amen. same thing that he is known as the Messiah. Now, it's not some man here is a Messiah. It's the Holy Spirit is the Messiah. Christ and the Holy Spirit is the same thing. So here it is here now, just working in the flesh, getting his body ready for the rapture and grace. Believe it, friends. Lord God, please let it happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take every spirit in here under my control for the glory of God. I say that so that you'll understand. See, don't you, if you're doubting, you be not good to stay very long. Because many people sitting here, no doubt, have seen what happens sometimes to unbelievers. It'll go from one to another, like it did in the Bible.
How many of you here is praying, knows that I'm a stranger, don't know nothing about you, raise up your hands that you're praying for you. Don't know nothing about you. You. That man sitting over the black town looking at you right here. I look. See that line? Can't you say it? It's an amber, goldish green line. You believe me to be a servant, sir? If God can reveal to me what your trouble is, you believe, you would believe me with all your heart. You believe it with God. Would you do it? Would you believe your healing would come? You have a prayer card? No, you don't have it. You don't need it. Your trouble's in your ear. If that's right, raise up your hand. It was in your ear. It isn't now, if you believe it. I don't know the man never seen you. I hear some man sitting right next to you. He's kind of praying. He's praying for something wrong with him. Look at me, sir. You got a prayer card? No. You don't. You believe me to be God's servant? You believe what I've told you the truth? You believe the presence of Jesus Christ? You believe your back's going to be all right now? You do raise up Hallelujah. If you will believe. I ask right now. I haven't seen him in my life. He never touched me. He's 20 feet from me. Amen. What did he touch? That fool's filled the scripture. He touched the high priest. He was saying, I prayed to be healed. Oh. See, he touched the high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Hallelujah. Now, what do you think, young man, sitting right there, young fellow, looking at me so straight? You believe God healed that kidney trouble you got? You do? Raise up your hand if you believe it. You want to stop that habit you got to? Throw them cigarettes away? Wave your hand like this if you do. Then lay it down and forget it. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right across from me there is setting a lady with glasses on. She's suffering with nervous trouble. You believe that God will heal you, lady? Raise up your hands if you believe it. All right. Will you do me a favor? There's a little lady sitting right next to you is suffering with a female trouble. Ladies trouble. That's right, lady. Raise up your hands that's so. Drainage. Lay your hand over on her and she'll get well because she'll Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, then sat next to her, went to, there's right over that other lady sitting right next to her. She's suffering with her legs, or trouble with her legs. You believe that God will heal your legs, raise up in there, right? You believe him to be Jesus Christ the same yesterday, day, and forever? Hallelujah. You believe sitting here, right behind this man sitting here in front, lady that's sitting here. You believe that God, you got, uh, Two dangerous things. One of them is cancer. The other is arthritis. You believe that God will heal you? If you will, raise up your hand. Say, I, I believe. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe? He's confirming the covenant. Here's a lady sitting here looking at you right behind this man. She's got on a red looking dress of some sort. Red up here, all sweater it might be. She's too far to dim out there. After her, see, that makes you so weak, the whole thing is going to turn a little, kind of a milky color around to the room. But that stands up over her, see that line? She's praying about something. If Jesus Christ will reveal to me what you're praying about, would you believe with all your heart? You will. I'm a stranger to you. You're a stranger to me. But you've gotten contact with the high priest because the signal that he gives me is right over you. See the sign. I know it is. Um, you have a tremendous nervous trouble. That you're suffering with, and also you got a garter on the throat that you're suffering with. That's right. Raise up your hand. You say you can see that. All right. You come. You're not from here. You come. You're not from this country here. This place. You come from Memphis. That's right. The lady sitting next to you. She also come from Memphis. You believe with all your heart, lady. You believe that God can heal you. You believe me to be His prophet or His servant. That's some of people. You believe me to be His servant. You believe it's God who's supposed to do this talking. You know, I wouldn't know it about you. You believe it would be God then? All right. You believe with all your heart and God, what you're suffering with, you got a, you got trouble with your throat also. And another thing, you got a knot, a growth in your side. You believe that God can tell me which side it's in? If it is, raise up your hand if I tell you the truth. It's in the right side. You believe God can tell me who you are? Will that help you? You're Mrs. Cox. Do you believe? All of you believe now? That's the confirming of the covenant in the seed of Abraham. If you can believe it. Here, there's a woman laying out there on the stretcher. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. 
Can you hear me, lady? Lay on that stretcher. Yeah. I cannot hear you. I know nothing about you. You're just a stranger to me. But do you believe that Jesus Christ can reveal to me what your trouble is? Would that help you? Would it would? If you lay there, you're going to die. You only have one chance to live. That's except Christ. You have cancer. That is right. You believe that God will make you well now? You do? Raise up your hand if you believe it. All right? In your place, the only thing that you could do is be rise up out of that bed and take up what you're laying on and go home cleaning your face and God is the seat of Abraham. Rise up in the name of Abraham. She raises up to take her promise to God. How many of you believe it with all your heart? Stand up. You got strength. God will give you strength. Rise up to your feet. Rise up to your feet. Rise up to your feet. There she is, up off of the stretcher. Now the rest of you want to receive Jesus Christ. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Stand up everywhere except Jesus Christ is here. Lord Jesus, heal up in Praise the Lord.